continuing to use BST within our training, we want to continue that practice and feedback. So this is where we need to identify what our mastery criteria are for each of these targeted skills. The BACB does not specify a specific mastery criteria. So the task list says things like demonstrates blah, 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 discusses blah, blah, blah. And it doesn't say what that looks like. That's great to a certain extent because it allows us the flexibility to identify mastery criteria that's going to make sense for our setting and to use that flexibility to adapt those skills and principles to our setting. But it does also mean that supervisors might have different expectations. And so it is really nice to clarify what it is that you are looking for with your trainees so that you can then look and see whether or not they're able to perform that skill and then provide additional training sessions to help them demonstrate that skill. So let's talk about how do we establish mastery criteria. Uh, first of all, we want to think about mastery versus fluency. Mastery generally is going to be they can perform the skill at least within these teaching settings in this specific time window. Fluency is going to be more about how quickly they're able to perform the skill, how much it's going to generalize, how long it's going to maintain over time, those types of variables. When you are considering mastery criteria, you want to consider whether this is a skill that they need to be able to do once or occasionally and um, enough to pass the exam type of a thing. Or is this a skill that they are going to be using for the rest of their profession, in which case you might want to set your mastery criteria, aiming more towards some of those fluency type goals. Now, you also have to track the performance of those skills. So you might have checklists that have how they're going to demonstrate those skills. And you might also create a cumulative graph of the task list items that they have completed. Um, or you could come up with a variety of other ways of tracking performance on their skills. Um, maybe you take a, a video recording of the first um, observation session that you do, and then you do sample video recordings in the future so you can see progress. Um, maybe you have them write up a teaching plan um, in the beginning and then you do teaching plans throughout and you have those you save those as a product measure of what their uh, how their writing of teaching plans looks over time you do want to plan for generalization um, across settings across clients and across domains of the behavior um, our goal with um, training someone so that they can get their credentials is to prepare them to be able to use those credentials. Now, there's obviously going to be um, constraints sort of around what is their competency, and they need to be aware of those. But if we can provide more opportunities for generalization within their training, it's going to expand their competency a little bit more because they've seen some of those they've worked in some of those situations um, during their training so it's going to open some more doors it's going to allow them to maybe generalize a little bit better what we don't want is to provide a very narrow experience and then have somebody walk out after taking the test thinking they can work with any organism that behaves even though their experience was very narrow and they only worked in a self-contained classroom with uh, you know, children kindergarten through second grade in a public school classroom. That's very different than every other 
um, organism who might need behavior analysis in the world, right? But you can make some opportunities for that generalization um, as much as you're able. You also want to plan for maintenance. So just because an individual trainee was able to demonstrate the skill towards the beginning of their supervision with you, we know that supervision takes years, right? With 2000 hours now, like minimum of two years, right? Well, that's a long time to maintain a skill that maybe they're not practicing on a daily basis. So plan for that maintenance, reassess skills throughout your supervision, incorporate those skills into more complex skills. Um, they're going to be taking their coursework and maybe learning about a topic and then not necessarily coming back to that topic in their coursework. Um, again, maybe at all, or, or certainly for a long chunk of time. Uh, so using those and tying them in throughout the supervision is really helpful to plan for that. 